Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Mercedes-Benz M-Class. For many car enthusiasts, the presence of a frame is still a sign of authenticity and a sign of reliability. Unfortunately, in practice, the frame means a worse passive safety, worse cabin ergonomics and a large vehicle lead, and also the presence of a specific problem of Russian cars, the corrosion of the frame number. The problem is exactly the same as that of Gallant Wagon. The number currently decays over time because it is located in a place that is intensely polluted. In addition, corrosion greatly weakens the frame. There is a good chance of getting a crack in the spark after off-road trips or tearing the consoles with crossbars. The factory anti-corrosion treatment of this unit is frankly given up by the age of 10, and when buying a car, you need to pay close attention to the readability of the numbers and the general condition. The body itself of cars with urban operation rusts relatively little. But swelling of paints and even holes in, in neglected cases occur regularly, especially on the Americans. Supervisors can be expected under the plastic lockers, but on the leading edge of the arches at the junction with the threshold. Traditionally, the risk zone is the bottom of the doors and the bed behind the engine compartment. Otherwise, corrosion is usually pitted at the seams and near the body and frame attachments. With minimal care, it will not show itself for a long time. If the body was not followed, then repairs can be expensive, rust will fall into many places from where it can no longer be smoked, and at the same time spoil the appearance with corrosion on the external panels. But the chances of finding a living body are still quite high. Their interior on cars after restyling is usually kept well done. Despite the abundance of plastic, unusual by Mercedes standards, the top end configurations please with the absence of squeaks and in general excellent materials. Only American leather is clearly inferior in quality to European leather, the seats require a thorough shake-up after 6-7 to seven years of car operation, and plastic wood can upset the owners of more classic Mercedes, with a tendency to delamination and the appearance of cracks. The poor configurations in terms of the quality of the interior trim are significantly inferior. It often seems that this is some kind of Ford Bronco and not an M-Class. Things are much worse with machines of air releases. Among the pre-styling ML, there are surprisingly many cars in very simple trim levels. American origin and a lot of imported cars in the low dollar years are reflected. They do not have climate control, often lacking command and unpretentious trim. It's not just a matter of simplicity, the build quality and soundproofing of the cabin are also frankly useless. The cabin ramps and bumps and vibrates on a relatively flat road. If possible, try to avoid cars made before 2000s and pre-restyling in general, if you want to get a Mercedes and not just a large CUV. The main problems are purely age-related. Torn and wet carpets, sagging doors, failure of the interior fan and climate drives, various electrical failures. Problems are multiplied by the clogged drainage of the catch and drains in front of the windshield. In this case, there was a lot of water in the cabin and the hassle is added at times. A final nuance that in concerns almost all cars is the backlash of the plastic gas pedal. Due to the banal wear of its axle, the ML remains without traction. Everything is repaired either by replacing the assembled part or by installing washers in the attachment point. Since the car is tall, the side panels of the front seats break off constantly. It is rather unfortunate to sit sideways and pull your legs to the ground. So collective farming in this unit is not so the consequences of the side impact, but simply traces of budget repairs and a sign that the car was treated without fanaticism. The knock of the rear door and the crack of the opening are the feature of a weak body and the, on the frame. You just need to change the rubber seals more often and the lock needs to be adjusted. Then the problem will be almost invisible. Salon and side mirrors with auto dimming are prone to swelling, and if the salon can be found in a live state during disassembly, then the side mirrors are only new. And you know the side mirrors on Mercedes are a favorite item for thieves? After a good owner, the salon can be almost in perfect condition, but almost certainly something will re require repair every year. And in case of an unsuccessful purchase, you can find yourself on a bunch of non-working elements, from a crooked stove to dead door locks, dead electric seat drives and other troubles that will pull a lump sum. Initially, the electrician of the car was considered very moody. Those critics would have looked at the level of complexity and the number of failures in cars literally 5 to 6 years newer. The cost of fixing electrical troubles on the W163 can be quite significant, especially of pre-styled cars, but in general the car now looks like a model of simplicity and low cost of repair. Most of the faults are simply repaired without requiring expensive dancing with a tambourine and replacing blocks at the price of a half a car. Indeed, a lot of problems are caused by the AAM block. It is in charge of lighting, central locking and other functions. 
the turn signal suddenly began to blink out of time, central locking doesn't work or it doesn't work spontaneously several times. Does the light go out and on after the engine is turned off? The problem is precisely in this block. At first, soldering usually helps, but in advanced cases, replacement will be required. Along the way, the key begin binding in the immobilizer may fly off and the car will remain motionless. In this case, it is difficult to do without star diagnosis. It is recommended to go to a specialized service that has a dealer scanner. By the way, similar problems are encountered with other cabin units. The soldering quality before styling was very low. In non-launched cases, everything is solved by very budgetary. But sometimes the trucks have time to burn out. In case of violations, due to high humidity and the board simply corrodes. The ABS block on ML before restyling sometimes fails due to a violation of soldering, and a more recent brake block on restyling, even in the version with EPS, is sometimes called SBC. But this has nothing to do with the problem of SBC block on W211. The device works quite reliably, only occasionally requiring soldering or replacing the brushes of the electric motor, because there is an ordinary vacuum amplifier. Violations of the wiring to the ABS sensors are common, especially after off-road trips. But those who like to force the corpse in the city also have problems. The insulation of the wiring under the bottom cracks, and with long travels of the suspensions, the wires do not withstand. The sensor themselves also refuse, especially if they are already unoriginal. The generator is comparatively weak. If you add a 220 volt converter for a laptop, electric saw, vacuum cleaner to the entire salon electrician, and at the same time a chandelier on the roof, it will fall quickly and without hesitation. Under the normal load, it can withstand more than 300,000 km before replacing brushes and bearings. The transfer case drive motor is also at risk, but even there, craftsmen can significantly reduce repair costs. The scythe in engine gauges are mostly reliable, but with eight V8 engines aren't in the hood, plastic becomes quite fragile by the edge of 10 and does the wire insulation. Any work in this case requires accuracy, otherwise the inevitable collective farm begins with the replacement of parts of the wiring. Mass airflow sensors and lambdas do not differ even more resource, periodically they should be changed, while well, about the convenience of replacing candles in the section about motors. Despite the frame and brutal appearance, the suspensions here are quite lightweight, however adjusted for the Mercedes quality. This means that on the asphalt, most of the nodes are nursing 100 to 1500 km, not really noticing the problems, but in the case of frequent trips to nature, the cost will appear quickly. The separation of the front shock absorbers just cuts off the pot is typical for door restyling cars. Also, the resource of the upper arm of the front suspension is sharply reduced off-road. Literally a dozen trips on dirty roads a year, and now its resource is not 100,000, but only 50. Interval bear mounts can withstand just one off-road ride. There are no struts in the front, the stabilizer is attached to the level itself, with an eyelet on bolts, and on the back there are a rather original design of roads without hinges. Fasteners tears them off sonorous chpunk, but more often they make themselves felt with a knock or in on irregularities. The stabilizer torsion bar itself burst even louder and costs more to replace. Besides, if it breaks down, it can literally break firewood. There have been cases when it completely demolished everything on the front engine cover and at the same time damaged the radiators. As you understand, it is better to use the native stabilizer struts and not reinforced ones. It will be better if the parts designed for this break down. But the torsion bars of the front suspension are not prone to breakdowns, but they sag over time. Besides, the owners tend to twist them to the upper position too often for no reason, which worsens the handling of the car. And cars from the Caucasus can have an electrically adjustable suspension level. A similar tuning for ML came from the Emirates. In this case, the car can squat on its front leg like a camel. In this case, the usual springs remain at the back. The rear suspension has a fair amount of headroom and relatively expensive components. In addition, it is incompatible with the elements of the company's classic multi-link. But the resource is at the level of the front suspension and even higher, if again the car was not driven off-road and with a full load. And it is also worth paying attention to the condition of the shock absorbers at the back. If they are worn out, the machine becomes a dangerous role. Hub bearings are not designed for low-profile rubber and mud wheels at all. If the rubber is more than 315 mm wide and even with a reduced overhand of the discs, then most likely they will have to be changed very often. And if the suspensions are in stock and the operation is accurate, then the native variants can easily withstand 200 and 300,000 km. There are no complaints about the brakes, unless the ABS could be more reliable, but the brake pipes need to be changed sometimes already at the age of 10 years. While the brakes are also rather weak for such a heavy car, 
but most of the cars are doing well, all the components are still NATO. More powerful brakes with ML55 AMG are not in general demand, unlike the same Gallica, cars in stock are found almost less often than tuned ones. The steering is rather weak for such a car, the rail is almost like that of W210, but the weight is one third higher and the rubber is as much wider. So the rails fall regularly and the power steering pump has to be changed often. Fortunately the rails are being repaired and the main pump unit without the bracket from a decent manufacturer cost a ridiculous 5-7000 rubles. Sure you won't find one of the catalog either, there they already come with fasteners and are different for all motors and models. Power steering pipes are also at risk, of course it is mainly the higher pressure line that tears. And for those who have traveled with the faulty power steering, the steering column is often already backlash. There are practically no cars on mechanics, but you definitely shouldn't be afraid of them, they are quite reliable. The diesel has a dual nose fly wheel, its condition should be checked very carefully when buying. The rear propeller shaft is heavily loaded and the suspension support consumable needs to be changed every 50-60 thousand kilometers. On cars before installing there were serious mechanical problems with the Teflon bushing, which it breaks, and the box itself was damp, plus the leaks of the turning cat and the minor troubles. After 2002, one purely resource problem remains. Wear of the gas turbine engine, e-linings, amortization of the blocking solenoid and contamination of the well body with wear products in the event of the untimely oil change, because according to the regulations it is not changed. Perhaps the most problematic part of the transmission is the transfer case. The main difficulties relate to cars manufactured before 1999, on which almost all the handouts have already been replaced with a new one, usually an improved one. It is worth to be afraid of machines on which there is a contract unit of production before 1999, with modernized bearings and a planetary gear set. Machines manufactured after 1999 no longer suffer from the noise and howling of the gearbox. Destruction of planetary gear bearings and shaft bearings is relatively much less common in them. The most common cause of jerking and noise is where or even a break in the drive chain or a drop in the oil level in the transfer case. Motors on ML are the same as on W210, W211 and on other cars of the brand in those years, V6 and V8 of quite successful M112 and M113 series. There are also M111 in line for us and diesel engines of OM622 and OM628 series. They can only be considered a large diesel of the one 628 series, its fuel equipment is prone to overflow and the blocking heads are prone to cracking. In addition, the EGR and the intake manifold are clogged and it is not arranged in the best way. The small inline Ford 2.3 is bad only because its 150 horsepower is frankly not enough for a heavy car, even with a manual transmission. The resource of this motor when installed on ML is still very large. The main problems are purely edge related. The plastic cracks and the rubber on the cranky's ventilation system and vacuum line softens, the motor seals are leaking, the DMRV usually requires cleaning or replacement. But the piston group is almost alive here, and all troubles can be eliminated. Motors of the M112 and M113 series are the most common. Cars before installing can be found in versions with a 3.2 liter M112 and a 4.3 liter V8, and the restyled V6 received an additional 3.7 liter versions for the ML350 and the V8 was supplied with a more powerful 5.0 liter volume. In 2000, the EML55 AMG appeared with a 5.4 engine of the same series. For most drivers, V6 capacity of 3.2 and 3.7 liters is enough. There are 280 and 235 liters. Respectively, V8 engines are already at least 272 horsepower. For pre installing ML430 and or 290 for ML500. The AMG version has a capacity of all 347 liters. All motors have an aluminum block, three valves, and two spark plugs per cylinder. They do not have phase shifters, complex intake, and other newfangled systems. And the main problems are leaks of valve covers, heat exchangers, block plugs. Very rarely, these motors have their aluminum liners lifted up. The barbaric exploitation is to blame. As for the peculiarities of the operation of gasoline engines on ML, it should be noted that V6 engines have a cooling system with the viscous coupling and noticeably better conditions for cooling the radiators and oil. Therefore, despite the lower power, their resource is even slightly higher than that of the V8. Another feature of the use of powerful gasoline engines on a high CUV is the possibility of overheating when driving at high speed on the highway, which is often abused by owners. The fact is that the Jeep doesn't differ in aerodynamics and at speeds over 160 km per hour, the load on the engine is very high often close to the maximum, especially taking into account the more evil tires and load, and the engine lacks the power of the cooling system, even taking into account a good 
airflow of the radiators. As a result, the temperature in the engine imperceptibly rises beyond 120 degrees and the oil temperature reaches 150, which leads to a slow cooking of the piston group and a gradual increase in oil consumption through the valve seals. On passenger cars with the same motors and these speeds, the load is much lower, one of the one and a half to two times, and even motors in poor condition can easily withstand it. It is also worth noting the Nate that during urban operation, air filters on the EML are clogged faster than on cars, and for all aluminum motors, the issue of the air purity is extremely important. Diesel engines of 2.7 liters of the OM612 series are good. Fuel equipment, piston equipment, and turbines are reliable here. The problem with cooking injectors and their staking is familiar to most branded services. The right tool in this case works wonders. Another resource of the timing chain is relatively small. There are cases of stretching already with a run of just over 150,000 km. Although taking into account the presence of cars with mileage, there are twice as many with a native chain. It can be concluded that this is either a violation of the operating conditions or the mileage was really off. Wiring problems arise mainly when diesel fuel gets on the motor wiring harness and connectors, but in any case they can be solved quite easily. In addition, a car with an engine of 163 diesel forces can quite convince in acceleration dynamics with a completely ridiculous appetite in comparison with gasoline ones. It is worth checking the condition of the nozzles, engine wiring, timing and be sure the presence of gases in the cooling system. Sometimes the cylinder head still cracks. On this information about the problems of the Mercedes-Benz M-Class W163 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.